So a tree map is a special kind of information visualization technique, and it applies to large, very large hierarchical data sets. Anybody know where you would see hierarchical data sets typically? Any ideas? Hierarchical data, does that mean anything to anybody? Well, um, correlations between data sets but don't necessarily apply to all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen something called tree maps for probabilities, so and it's um, tracking events, probability of combined events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one, one example you can think of, can you think of any examples of hierarchies just in general? Like, not necessarily hierarchical data sets, but just hierarchies. Organizational structures. Organizational structures, exactly, like management hierarchies, for example. A very common hierarchical data set is one on your phone or on your laptop or on your desktop PC. All of your files are organized into a hierarchy. You have my computer at the top of the hierarchy, and then there you have different folders, and inside each folder is a set of folders and files. That's a hierarchical data set, and right? very common that you interact with every day. Any data set, any normal data set can be decomposed into a hierarchy. So for example, surveys. You, you would break those surveys up into different hierarchical categories. Yeah. One, uh, one example could be you would break them up by gender. So you start with everybody, then you subdivide into gender. Then you might subdivide again into undergraduate versus postgraduate. You might subdivide into first year, second year, third year undergraduate, first year, second year, third year postgraduate. So you'd form a hierarchical structure of your survey data depending on who took it, for example. There are many different ways you could formulate that hierarchy. But you could take any data set, put it, put it into different groups, and formulate a hierarchy out of it. <coughs> And tree maps are a way to visualize very large hierarchical data sets. And here's the idea. It starts with the root of the hierarchy. This is a traditional tree data structure or data set. Right? This is hierarchical data and this is the, what, what, what we're used to looking at. Has everybody, has everybody seen a tree kind of structure before. So we have the root node of the tree, and then we have that, that root node of the tree in the tree map. This is the tree map equivalent of this tree, this traditional tree structure. So the root node gets mapped to the whole, the large rectangle. And that root node is subdivided into one, two, three, four different rectangles on the tree map. This is a, a, a leaf node. So these are leaf nodes, meaning they have no children. And these are internal nodes, meaning they have children. So this leaf node, which is a 12, will get mapped to this rectangle in the tree map. Does everybody see that? And this leaf node gets mapped to this rectangle in the tree map view. This internal node gets mapped to this rectangle in the tree map view. And the internal node gets subdivided into one, two, three, four, five leaf nodes. Here they are, one, two, three, four, five leaf nodes in the tree map view. Here we have another internal node. 
it is mapped to this rectangle here. And it is subdivided. It's subdivided into another rectangle, which is here. So they're really nested rectangles. Does everybody see that? They're nested rectangles. That rectangle is subdivided into three leaf nodes, 6, 8, and 11, 6, 8, and 11. Here's a leaf node that's mapped to this rectangle of 5, and then the last one, which is mapped to a rectangle of size 40. So the traditional tree structure is mapped to a set of nested rectangles in the tree map. It adds up to 100. That's right, that's right. It doesn't have to add up to 100, but it can add up to 100. And one thing to notice is the 40, this is, a, this is the largest data value stored in the leaf nodes. It's mapped to the biggest rectangle. So the size of the rectangles represents the amount of data or the data value that they, that they um, are mapped to. So a small one, for example, one, is mapped to the smallest rectangle. And a 40 is mapped to the largest rectangle. And then you have everything in between. That makes sense, hopefully. Here's another example. In, in this example, we cannot see explicit internal nodes. I know what the internal nodes are because I understand tree maps. But the internal nodes are not made explicit here. We see explicitly the leaf nodes. Here's another example that shows ex the internal nodes explicitly. So we start with the root node, which is A162, and that's the big rectangle on the outside. Now A162 is subdivided into three, three more rectangles. B10, which is a leaf node, that's here. C30 is also a leaf node, and that's here. But now, because there's some padding between the, there's a little bit of space between the leaf nodes and their parents, we can actually see the, the explicit internal nodes. D62 is this one here. Right, and there's padding. E60 is an internal node, and it's here. D, D62 is subdivided into four children, F6, G6, H6, I44 is an internal node, and there it is, and then I44 is further subdivided, so it's a re it's, we call it a recursive subdivision. Does everybody see that? Here's another example. This is, anybody want to guess what that is? Motherboard. A motherboard is... <laughs> That's a fucking motherboard, actually. That's like um, a computer usage map. It is a map of your <laughs> file system, of all of your files. So every single file on the disk is mapped to a rectangle. And they're nested, so <clears throat> you can actually see folders in here. For example, here is a folder, and it contains all the files that are inside the folder. Here's another folder. The folders are indicated by the shading. Here's another folder full of files. This is if I, has anybody ever had the problem that they run out of disk space and you want to free up disk space? Well here you can get an overview of the files and their sizes in just one second. So if I said where's your biggest file, 
and you want to delete that to start with, you could find your biggest file in, in a, a fraction of a second on this by using this visualization. Remember, we said it's usually a search. We're usually searching for something. And DataViz is good at accelerating the search. Well, here we can find the biggest files in the fractions of a second. Whereas otherwise, how would you do it otherwise? Anybody ever try to... Look at actual sizes. You do it manually, yeah. You'd search manually, clicking on files, looking at the actual sizes and so on. So what are these good for? Basically, they take the existing space, like in this example, and they fill it up. Right, so we call them space filling. They represent hierarchies. You can actually move up and down the hierarchies interactively. They can represent multivariate data. In this, in this case, the color represents different kinds of files, like user-generated files, program-generated files, operating system-generated files, music files, those sorts of things. They also apply to very large data sets. So I can see thousands of files sitting on my hard drive you know, in, in, in a second. They don't encode any geospatial information and they don't preserve neighborhoods. That's not very important. 